Right, so today I'm going to be sharing with you how our clients manage to upgrade from 5 room HDB flat to a private condo. Right, I'm going to run through all the figures, all the numbers that you can probably mirror and do on your own in terms of the planning and let's just get straight into it. Basically, they were selling a 5 room BTO flat. All right, it was somewhere in Pungol, they managed to sell it for 595k. So upon selling, I'm going to run through the selling plans first. They had to pay back their outstanding HDB loan, which was at that point of time, 195,000 balance. And then over the past five years that they, was, they were staying there, they had used up a total of 260,000 from their CPF, which now they have to pay back into their CPF account. And then the selling cost involved in selling their HDB flat was actually around 15,000. That's their agent fees, their legal fees, all the moving costs, uh, all in, uh, calculated. Their balanced cash proceeds would have been 100 and was $125,000 that they can use for their next purchase. Now, to understand what they can purchase, we actually have to run through all their uh, CPF balances, which at this point of time, right, as you can, as you can see, outside of the, their HP flat, the husband actually has 70,000 in his OA balance and at the same time, he also has around 48,000 in investments, all right? And the wife, she had 65,000 and she also had another 65,000 invested from her ordinary account alone. So upon selling their flat, they actually did and they decided that it's time to take out their investments to prepare themselves for their next investment, uh, which is, would be property actually. Uh, based on their income, based on their age, they actually got a loan approval of up to 1.48 mil, all right? Uh, healthy income. Um, good age as well. And the total CPF combined, as you can see, would be $508,000. That is coming from their sales refund, $120,000, $140,000. And if we add up all the CPF balance, all their investments, they have a combined of $508,000. They're just in their late 30s. Sounds a lot, but it's actually quite common actually nowadays to have this kind of amount combined when husband and wife has been working. All right? Now, their purchase plan. They're looking to buy something in the range of 1.15 mil. Okay, what's going to happen is they have to place a deposit in cash of 5%. All right, then after that, the uh, balance of 20% would actually have to, or rather can be used from their CPF. That means um, divided by 2, 115k each. All right, now as you can see, they have a total of 508,000 in their CPF. If they're going to be depositing 115k each, all right, that means they will have a balance after purchase. Husband would have a balance after purchase of $123,000. The wife would have a balance after purchase of $155,000 in her CPF ordinary account. After placing the 20% CPF deposit, 5% cash deposit, balance of 75% would have to be taken from a loan, which is $860,500. Okay? And if we were to break this down over 26 years, which is what the banks granted them, a maximum of 26 years loan, um, at the rate, today's rate of 1.35 mil, they would have to pay $3,279 uh, every single month for the next 26 years. Now that means when we went back to their CPF ordinary account, the transaction um, statements, and we averaged out the entire year's income with bonuses for the past 15 months, the husband actually had an average of $1,320 uh, going into his ordinary account every single month. The wife has slightly higher income and she has one three five five. So if you take 3279, which is their monthly mortgage, okay, and we use their CPF to pay off this 3279, there's actually a shortfall, a balance of $604 that they would have to either top up in cash or what most people would do in this situation is the fact that they have a total balance, a total CPF balance of 278000 in their ordinary account after the purchase, they would actually use this CPF reserve to pay off this $604 every single month. All right, this $123,000, this $155,000, all right, it will last them 16.9 years. And then the wife's $155,000, it will last her 21.3 years to pay off this $604 every single month. Combine, combine their reserves, as long as they are working, it will last them a total of 37 years. That's very healthy. They are taking just a 26 years loan, right? That means that they have enough to fully pay off without topping up any cash if they want to, right? Now, why? Why would they want to go through this entire process? So, I'm just gonna share with you, or rather the, the discussion that I had with them prior to going on to this um, journey of upgrading to a private condo. 
because when we first met up, okay, husband is slightly older uh, by two years. He is 39 years old and they live in a five room HDB flat. Their flat is worth $595,000. That's actually a, quite a premium price. That means their property is located very near an MRT, uh, very near an LRT. They've got amenities, they've got good schools, they've got a supermarket at their doorstep, all right, it's in Pungol. So, and they're so comfortable with the place and, and they don't see the need to push themselves to sell and then go through the entire motion because the wife says that by the time they hit 65, eventually by the time they are 65 years old at 20, 20, 45, all right, that property, that same property would be fully paid anyway, all right, and this would be the typical Singaporean HDB owner timeline. All right, staying, staying put, fully pay off, and then at the age of 65, all right, once their kids are all married, moved out, they would downgrade to a three-room HDB flat, buy it for 300K, all right, and assuming, of course, 300K is today's value. So in, in, um, by the time they want to retire in 25 years' time, assuming their flat can also sell for 6595K, all right, they would have a balance of $295,000, which is, which is okay, which is fine, all right, because when you downgrade, you would have a $295,000 waiting for you for your retirement. And then here's the thing. So they wanted to know their options, all right? Besides this, let's call this timeline one, all right? What if there is another timeline where they actually move into a private condo, right? Or, or rather, what's, the, what's in it for them? So today, after doing some research, they actually came to a sweet spot of 1.15 mil purchase. And then same thing, same thing, as I mentioned earlier today, as I mentioned earlier just now, at the age of 65, all right, after 25 years, okay, after 25 years, they would have it fully paid. Assuming in 25 years, this five-room flat is also worth 595, this three-room flat is also worth 300,000, the same 1.15 mil condo will also be, with, be worth 1.15, assuming. All right, now, what is their plan? Their plan is still to downgrade to a three-room HDB at 300,000, all right, and then they would have a balance of 850k right that is almost three times almost three times more for them to retire on so along the way yes the wife was saying along the way you know it's going to be a little bit uncomfortable for them she doesn't see why she should be pushing herself uh, pushing themselves uh, for for this upgrade okay because they have to pay more for the house they have to cut back on certain luxuries that they can afford today easily all right but here's a question i posed to them all right. If they were to stay on in this same timeline, staying on to their five-room HDB flat, downgrading at the age of 65, they would have 295K, all right, compared to going on to the second timeline where they actually go on to purchase a condo and then having 850. The difference of 850K profit here, 295K profit here, if he were to stay on this five-room HDB flat fully paid, would he be able, would they be able to save up 555,000 extra? because they don't have to pay off a higher mortgage, right? They don't have to pay off a higher mortgage, their expenses are much lower, they can save more. The question is, for 25 years, can they save up 555K? Because personally for me, if I have 100K, if I have 200,000 saved up, I would be buying a new car, I would be going to multiple holidays, all right? Before I know it, by the time I'm 65, I wouldn't have this 55, I would have spent it somewhere. All right, that's, that's normal. But if you can save up, okay lah, you know? So I asked them, would they be able to save up this 555 extra? Answer is no. That's when they realize that they have to move on from timeline one to timeline two, okay? And see themselves fully paying off a private condo. All right, so that they can retire with three X income. All right, so you have to understand that a property can be seen as a forced saving Tool because you cannot take money out. Like as I said, like I said, you know, if you have this 555 lying around, whether it's in stocks, equities, cash, all right, it will be, it can be spent easily. But if your money is in the property that you are staying in, the only way to cash out is to sell off, downgrade when the time is right. All right, so that is the plan. So after they are after they are convinced that this is the timeline, this is the plan that they want to go to, all right, we look at the numbers deeper. Okay, so now, as I mentioned earlier, they have this option of paying the 604 balance in CPF, okay, using their CPF to pay off, which is more than enough. They have more than enough because they are buying, they are punching below their weight 
they are buying something way below their means, all right? even at 1.15, it's something reasonable for them. What if they consider this second option of paying this 604 in cash instead? What would happen? All right? That would mean that it would mean that there are 278,000 that is sitting behind, sitting less behind in their CPF ordinary account is generating 2.5 CPF interest compound every single year for the next 15, 20, 25 years, all right? All right. It is time all right, by using your cash to pay off this balance of 604 mortgage that you need to pay up. All right. You would be making your CPF work harder for you. All right. And what's going to happen is, so what does 2.5% compound for the next 15, 20 years mean? All right. Let's just go to this calculator. What I use would be bankrate.com. Just search for bankrate.com compound interest calculator. Key in. They would have $278,000 in their CPF today. For the next 15 years, zero contribution. All right, let's just say their, their income remains stagnant. No excess in their CPF at all for the next 15 years. But CPF pays them 2.5% interest year on year on year on year on year. All right. That means after 15 years, all right, for $278 today, for 15 years, zero additional contributions, he would have $402,000 in his CPF account, in their CPF combined account. And by then, he would be 64 years old, all right? That would be in 2035. If we take a look at their loan amount that they are taking, which is $862,000 for 26 years, all right? Let's just go to the schedule 15 years later, which is 2035, December, okay? Check this out. His loan balance is actually 399. If he has a loan balance of $399,000 and he has enough in his CPF, in their CPF combined account, at the age of 54, 15 years later, at the age of 54, he can actually fully pay off. This is if he used his cash to pay off the 604 excess every single month. All right? It would have generated enough over the next 15 years to help him fully pay off. That is uh, 26 minus 15, that's 11 years. 11 years paying off faster. Also means that at the age of 54, he would have a fully paid property. In fact, this is supposed to be 65. 54 is actually here. At the age of six, uh, 54, right, he would have it fully paid. How many Singaporeans at the age of 54 can say that they have a fully paid 1.15 mil condo? Question to pose ourselves would be here, this being uncomfortable and also being comfortable. At which stage in life do we want to go through this comfort, uncomfort stage? Clearly, because if they were to stay on to their HDB, for the next 10, 15, 20 years, life would be comfortable. They can have all the luxuries that they want, all right? But then they will realize that compared to moving on to a private condo, their retirement years would be comparatively uncomfortable. When it's three times lesser income, all right? And at the same time, okay, if they were to move on to a private condo, that means that for the next 10, 15, 20, 26 years, life could be a little bit uncomfortable. They would have to pay a higher mortgage. They have to cut back on some expenses all right, to manage things out. But then, after that, 65. In fact, 54 onwards, life can be comfortable for them if they want to. All right? The thing is, the thing is, you know, at the age of 65, when the income difference is three times, right, to make it up for it, at the age of 65, you would have to continue working instead of enjoying the retirement. The thing is, at the age of 65, yes, most of us will want to work, okay? But physically, would we be able to? I'm young, I really feel tired, you know? Um, so I can only imagine someone at the age of 65, all right? Mental strength would be there, but physical strength might not be there to help us get a gainful employment, meaningful employment. And basically, that's the conversation that we had, okay? In terms of what's better for them, staying in the HDB, going to a private condo, what kind of calculations we're looking at, how to play up the numbers so that it can best benefit them. In fact, going through their numbers, right, 1.15 is not their max budget. Okay, they can easily push themselves up to 1.25, 1.4. But they adjusted the numbers so that they can fulfill earlier retirement if they want to. At the age of 54, they can have a fully paid 1.15 mil property. They can easily downgrade to a three-room flat. So now, that's the entire conversation that we had in terms of what's better for them, whether it's staying on to the HDB, moving up to the private condo, and how the numbers would work out for them. Okay, and today they realise that they can have fully paid property at the age of 54, at the age of 65, latest, if they want to. They can easily downgrade to a three-room flat, 
cash out, get 850k thousand waiting for them upon cashing out. Right? It's up to them whether they want to do it at the age of 65, 54. I mean, today they decide to top up in cash okay, because they realize that to be able to save up 11 years just by paying $604, right? Their incomes, the combined income is above over 10k. Uh, in fact, for many of our clients, the minimum that we've been able to see uh, couples upgrading to a private condo would be 7k and above, right? Realistically, 7k would be safe. Anything less than that would be quite a squeeze, right? Wouldn't really encourage, right? but we have to see the numbers. We have to see what kind of cash profits you have, what kind of CPF balances you have, what kind of income you have. So all, all these we go through, we run through, like what I just did with, uh, with this client, and then we see what's the best option for you. Because if, if private condo is not the best option, we also run through what would be the best scenario for you, right? so that you can have a comfortable retirement future. Alright, that's it. Okay, if you have any questions, please drop us a text. If you want to start on your own upgrading plans, drop us a text. Don't forget to like and share this video with your friends. Alright, see you in the next video.